Hello everybody, my name is Chad Riley, and sometimes I talk about Dota. I don't even know what week it is in the playoffs. It's the third week I've been doing playoff content, so I guess round four, because we had two rounds last week. Four and five, technically. A lot of stuff. I think today we have three best of ones and one best of three. So at most we'll have six games to go over, so I'm not really going to rush through it because it's not that much content. If you guys have not been paying attention to the regular 82L Discord, not the Archon League Discord that T created, the regular one, official 82L Discord, they're talking about changing up some of the way teams can qualify for a league. So they're talking about changing it from a hard cap that players cannot go over. So for instance, I think it was Archon three this year that went up to archon five or archon five that went up to legend two or something like that i don't i don't remember what it is and next year it will be or next season they're thinking about changing it to an average i mean some teams have already expressed concerns or some people in the discord that it'll affect archon league the most because we have a huge spread of, of players right we have people going down from herald all the way up until archon so our spread is bigger than most other divisions leagues so, they're trying to figure out a fair way to do it and make it unique for Archon League because the spread of ranks is so big. So, I know they'd love feedback. If you guys hop in there, give them feedback. I'm sure it'll be appreciated. If not, just they're, they're talking about it, so just be aware of that. Other than that, I think we can hop right into some playoff Dota. All right, our first series we're going to go over is Ann Kenny vs. Wib P. Let's see. So Ann Kenny went with Wraith Kane. Pretty classic. Pretty good this patch. What's his win rate now? A 54%. Still really good. Uh, Nature's Prophet I really like. Uh, spreads up the map a lot. They have already really good push. Toad Hunter, Clockwork, and Jakiro. So I like how that Jakiro rounded it out because the first thing I was going to say is they really lack um, wave clear. You got the Jakiro. The Jakiro is going to have to be the one killing waves. You got Nature's Prophet Wraithkin, who can put a lot of push, and you got Clockwork for pickoffs. Combined with Nature's Prophet, you can do some really good pickups. And you got the Tide Hunter for disengages or in initiation. So I overall, I think this is a pretty solid draft. I really like it. You know, obviously I'd like a little bit more wave clear because I harp on that all season. This is just like how this season the meta was. It was wave clear was king. But overall, I really like it. And if if Whip P's draft lacks wave clear, you're gonna have a lot of issues with the skellies and the treants. So good draft. Whip P, you know, with Juggernaut, I think Juggernaut's really good right now. Um, I hate the hero. I think he's good. Lich, I think he's one of the most boring heroes to play in the game. Hate Lich. I don't think he's that good right now. I think there's some better supports, but I don't think he's terrible. Um, he slows down, pushes a little bit. He's not bad. Kunkka gives pretty good wave clear, catch, and team fight. Uh, he's kind of a jack of all trades, master of none, in my opinion. So I don't think it's a bad pick. Nyx Assassin, you got good, good pick off. Um, if this Wraith King went Radiance, you can stun him out of Radiance with Spiked Carapace. Not bad. And then a break for Toad Hunter. I like that too. Break for Toad, break for Wraith King. Not a bad pick. And then Sand King, really good wave D push. Overall, another really pretty solid draft. I think. The one spot I would change is the Lich. It looks like they did ban out Witch Doctor, Shadow Shaman, some of these really good supports. Um, and then they picked Jakira themselves, so already running low on good supports. I mean, Lich isn't bad. I, overall, I really like this draft too. I like both these drafts a lot. I think I'm going to say Ankeny's draft simply because I think this push is really good. And you're going to have to send back the Sand Cane or the Kunkka. Luckily, of Kunkka, you can X yourself when you TP, so that's not that big of a deal. I actually like that a lot for countering this Nature's Prophet Wraith King split push. Not bad, but because this is a core Nature's Prophet, he can take towers himself really easily. So, overall, two very solid drafts. I really like these drafts, guys. Good job. I think we're going with Ann Kenny, but I like both these drafts. Um, a lot of really big team fights in this game. Shout out R0914 for casting. Need a man. Pick off onto the Nature's Prophet. Unfortunately, I think I don't know how to make it so it casts in client. Um, it picks up your mic all the time. It must just have to be like an open mic or something. But like not just not a whole lot of huge um, 
team fights, no team wipes throughout the game. It looks like uh, Ankane did a pretty good job of just splitting up the map. Wow, good find on the clockwork there too. To die back on the jug. Centuries said, like I was saying a little bit in that clip. Not sure how much I'm gonna edit out, uh, but this it was very not team fighty. I it didn't really look like there were a lot of team fights. I, I found one spot where there were like three or four deaths, not a whole lot. I don't think there were any team wipes the whole game. Um, so I attribute that to Ann Kenny taking advantage of his nature's profit and just playing really smart with it, um, doing pickoffs and not taking team fights. So Good job, Ann Kenny. They moved on. Uh, we'll jump into the next series. One thing I did forget to bring up before we jump to the next series was Ann Kenny did have a stand-in. I think it was, or not a stand-in, a roster change. I think it was this guy that played Toad. So it's always good to see teams do well with with uh, roster changes. It's good to see that they didn't really lose their um, lose their style. So I wanted to point that out real quick. Good job. The next series we had was Harpies and Two Boost. This is what reminded me to point out the Ann Kenny roster changes. Harpies also had a roster change. I believe they brought in X Chosen and I think T was moved or something. I don't know. He was moving around, so I don't know if it had anything to do with real life stuff or just in-game stuff. But we can jump into the series. Two Boots went with a Faceless Void, an Underlord, a Puck, a Shaman, and a Snapfire. I like this. Um... Void, I guess, is really bad right now, but it's a good team fight. Sets it up. You can use it to escape. People always make fun of you in pubs, but I think it's legitimate. If you chrono someone and TP out, I think it's fine. Uh, I actually don't think it's great. You probably shouldn't do that. If you can escape, Faces Void has a lot of escape abilities, so maybe use those instead. But uh, the Underlord synergizes well with the Faceless Void because of his Q, which is percent based, and if they stay in a long time, you do a lot of damage. Good team fight out of the puck. Uh, pretty decent wave clear hero as well. Shaman is a pretty decent wave clear hero as well. And you have the push. You were definitely lacking some push with your cores. Um, you would need to like cut waves with Underlord, have your creeps hit it. That's the only way I see you taking towers with these cores. Shaman fixes that as well. And then they have Finley, which is even added team fight in the Faceless Void Chrono. Overall, very solid draft. I do like this way better than some two boot drafts I've seen in the past. So. I like this draft a lot. Harpies and with Witch Doctor, who is a huge support in NA professional level pubs. Monkey Kane is a huge core. Um, what's his win right now? It's down to 50%. It was like 53, 54%. So it seems the more people play it, the worse it's getting. And I know people are slightly moving away from it. I still think it's good. Uh, I think I would have gone Maelstrom instead of Battle Fury. I guess who are they against? Yeah, I, I think I like Maelstrom better um, into Ags, but I'm not a carry, so don't really listen to me. The offlane bristleback, I know Give really likes this. I hate this. I think it's not good right now. I don't think bristleback is in a good enough spot. I think it actually isn't bad for against the faceless void, but it is bad against the underlord, I think, because he does percent base damage, and bristle likes to have people attack him or spells on him on his back. They went with a middle sniper. When did they pick this? They last picked this. I don't love it. I think the Void can get on top of him. The Puck can get on top of him. Dan Rather's built a blank at 40 minutes, so late game he can get on top of him. So I don't love the Sniper here. And then they went with an Outworld Destroyer. I think that hero is apparently broken right now. I don't... Guys, I don't know. I'm not... I don't know. I can't keep up with all this. Apparently this hero's nasty. But he'd even build a Meteor Hammer. I don't think Ags is the build here, if I'm being honest. I think you go... Sure, Tranquils is fine... Stick is necessary. Then you go Meteor Hammer. Then you can go Aether Lens. And then Axe. But I think you need this Meteor Hammer. It'll help you de-push waves. It helps your catch. Um, even a little bit team fight. So I think you need a Meteor Hammer if you're going to pick Outward Destroyer. Overall, I definitely like 2 boost draft better. I think the Bristleback and the Sniper are not necessarily super meta picks. Not necessarily super good right now. And I think 2 boots kind of have answers for both those heroes. So I like 2 boost draft overall. Um, and they won. I swear I don't have bias because they won, but maybe a little. I don't know. I just like Tupus Draft better. Good ward placement. 
for the harpies there. Really aggressive wards. I like it. Ooh. Wow, really good chrono by Shu. Okay, so that's why he went with the eggs on the OD. Saved her in chrono. I actually like that. I still think Meteor Hammer is the build, but it's not. I, I understand why he did it. Did they get him too? They might. He just astral him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I thought he would have another charge for the puck. My bad. I lied. This poor OD is so poor. I feel that pain. So, this game was a pretty good comeback from two boots. If you look at the graphs here, that was the only team wipe, but down here, um, it was a big fight for two boots. I actually didn't watch it, I'm just assuming. But a huge spike. They, they, I, I think they killed some heroes without, without buybacks, and they ran down mid and took tower. So, this was a pretty good game. I think, so far, yeah, game of the week. Strictly because it's it's back and forth like this um, and Kenny and Whippy I think it was a very good game to watch because it shows how to split up the map a lot And I think both teams are really good. This one's really good because it's it's back and forth a lot. So so far very good game to watch uh, Very good job two boots um, and Very good game All right, so this is the last best of one of the night. It was after two boots versus um, Harpies and and Kenny versus Whippy. So I think Aunt Kenny vs. Whip P finished about 15 minutes earlier, so they may have been able to watch the end of the Two Boots Harpies game. Uh, it's a back and forth game for Two Boots, so it's kind of going into this. Aunt Kenny has the advantage because they had a quicker game, longer time to rest, and more time to think about this next game. With that in mind, Aunt Kenny went with Weaver. I guess Weaver's going to get in a lot of play, specifically in NA Pro level pubs and um, C level pubs, I think. Maybe China, but I think it's C. Um, so he's been picked up a lot. What's his win rate? 49%. So a little bit low, lower than 50, but I think it, he's doing all right. Alchemist was really big for a couple days. I think it's a pretty good hero right now. They went in the Brewmaster. I love Brewmaster. Um, I really thought Agnum Sceptered, uh, which I think made it so he had like two charges of it. Is that what Ags does? I think that's what Ags does. I think the shard gives him a purple one, right? Or it might be reverse around. But I think Brewmaster was supposed to be a really good hero. I'm surprised at how little it's picked. Shows how much I know about Dota. But I really thought it was going to be a good hero. The win rate is not terrible. 48%. Uh, here's another Outworld Destroyer. Four position. Uh, he went with the Meme Hammer. I like it. And then they went with the Jakiro. So very solid draft overall. Not a lot of team fight other than this Brewmaster. But you have a lot of escape and a lot of... You can have them initiate on you. And then the team can come up and you can win team fights that way. I don't think you have to initiate team fights. I think you kind of just freeze them out. Uh, pretty solid draft, though. Obviously, some stuff lacking, but pretty solid. Two boots, they went with Wraithkin. Again, I talked about it earlier. Really solid hero right now. Shaman, I really like this for the Dan, Dan Rather. I like this hero. Or, oh, this is a Finley Shaman. Dan Rather went with Quap. Ugh, I don't like this Quap. Death Prophet, I thought this is a pretty solid hero. 48%, still not that good. Um, but I think it's a pretty solid hero. You get the push out of it, you get D-push, uh, team fight. So I think it's a pretty good pick, but I don't know in the meta how good it is. Quap, you get the burst, you get the... I don't really know, you don't have wave clear. I, I, I don't love Quap right now in general, and I don't love it as a four position either. Um, but that's my biased opinion. And then they went with a Toad Hunter for the offlane. So... Five, four, three, two, one. Uh, very tanky very tanky lineup for the most part all your cores are really tanky co-op can be tanky i think i like ankeny's draft better you definitely have better team fight on two boots uh, initiate with the um ravage co-op ulti and um you got the stuns here you can definitely blow people up um you have to be quick fingered on the weaver to ulti um the alchemist can kind of sustain a little bit brewmaster you got an ulti right away od's got good save I, so I really like this Ann Kenny draft. I, I am going to give them the edge here. You don't have great wave clear other than like the Death Prophet. I think it's pretty good. These two, you have to be in the wave. So I say like C level wave clear. I was talking about that a little bit last week. Shaman, you shock, but then you have to auto attack the creeps at when you max out your shock. So it's not that good. And Rankin does a good job of pushing with his skellies. 
and if it gets radiance and yada 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 but i think i like egg candy shaft a little bit better so i just want to point out i have no idea when will be good fights oh i also think and kenny and whippy played a day early so they could have watched the whole thing so i definitely give and candy edge going in this game looks pretty crazy pretty crazy i have no idea where to pick look at this all these team fights they won and then for like 30 minutes they did a good job of holding them off not giving up too many kills and then they got team wiped here and the game ended so for 30 minutes they stalled it's very impressive but yeah i don't i don't even know where to pick i guess i'll go to the end of the game this last team fight if you guys have any clips you want to show me i i could miss a rampage in here because i don't know when it is just for next season if you guys have clips let me know Good save on the OG there. Holy crap, this Weaver. Dude, this Weaver is destroying it. So this is two boots pushing into them. Oh, that range on that shackle. He literally just like three shot. So Weaver is a problem. Well, my Dota crashed after that game, but definitely game of the week so far. Uh, we still got one more best of three series to go over, but that game was really good really fun to watch very good series uh definitely and kenny verse is two boots probably the game of the week uh we'll see if we got this last series but that's my prediction all right last series we got volsol versus snow cones best of three uh let's check it out first game volsol went with viper night stalker wraith kane lena and clockwork okay so this is a five position lena i believe got good wave clear kind of do good pickoffs with the clockwork got a stun just wicked uh, what's the word squishy that's what i'm looking for wraith can i don't know how alina does i guess Lena's a good laner so he can pro probably help out off lane night stalker i don't know how good that is anymore this night stalker's winning at 52 percent so maybe it's a little bit better than i was aware of in mid viper i think viper is just an annoying hero in my opinion don't love him snow comes in with the mid sniper i think that's not bad against the viper they last picked it, so that's probably what they were thinking. Um, the Viper can't really get to him to do anything, so you basically have to just sit there and be like, all right, I guess we're both just farming. I'll farm jungle a little bit faster than you can farm lane, and uh, I'll push into your tower. They had a carry monkey cane. Talked about that earlier. I think it's pretty decent. Uh, five position Phoenix. I think Phoenix is a little bit on the rise. Kind of a sneaky hero. Only 49.7% win rate, so maybe I'm wrong, but I think he's on the rise. We'll see in the weeks to come. Went with a spear break, I've been seeing that a lot more. I don't think spear break is that good, but he's got a 51% win rate, so he's better than th some of the heroes I say are good. Keep that in mind. And then Doom. So this is a really weak lane. Uh, you can take advantage of that as a well, lane on Wraith King. I don't know how much you can take advantage of it. I don't think that's a great lane either. I think Night Stalker Clockwork's a really bad lane as well. Um, during the daytime, during the nighttime, obviously Night Stalker's a beast. The Phoenix, level 3 Phoenix, can probably kill both of these guys, especially with a Monkey King. So lane-wise, I think Snow Cones have the edge. Draft-wise, I think... I think Volsal's got better wave clear with Viper and Lina. Uh, Night Stalker with an Ags, eventually he didn't get an Ags, so never mind. Um, you got good pickoff here with the Lina and Clockwork and Night Stalker to an extent. Uh, you got pretty tanky heroes here. It's really not a bad draft for Volsal. Uh, Snow Cones, I think they just have better lanes. They got better team fight. If you hook shot someone, you want to kill them, but then Phoenix can just egg in the background, and then you have to, okay, go to him. You can run in and stun people with the Spirit Breaker. Um, and Doom, I guess Doom's okay. It's, no, 44% rate. Doom is not okay. Never mind. Doom's a bad hero. Um, I think I like Snow Cones draft a little bit better still. Just, I like the team fight. Oh, Wait, no, they have no wave clear. No wave clear. All right, I like Volsal's draft better. Sorry, I take it back. I like Volsal's draft better. They just have better wave clear. Uh, especially in the Wraith King, how do you stop a the Skelly push? You have to send a Phoenix back, and it'll take like five seconds with his... I guess he gets shard, right? Yeah, ow. He got shard, which is pretty decent for killing the Skellies. 
Hmm, I like this team fight. I'm gonna go with snow cones. I, I like the wave clear. I think you definitely have some issues here with the wave clear, but if you snowball, you won't have an issue. So you just have to play really good in the lanes, and I think they have really good lanes. Um, so I'm gonna go with snow cones. Um, so I actually thought Volsa would have the better wave clear here with the Lena Viper. Stalker ultimate Phoenix get in there do the ulti make Night Stalker useless oh that's true I didn't even think of that how oh, Phoenix can just make Night Stalker useless oh I don't know if I chase this honestly kind of a far away Phoenix egg doesn't stun any of them. The stun. His dark ascension's done. He's got to wait for a few more seconds before my time starts. Game two, we got Volsal Mars, mid out or destroyer, carry jug, five Chikiro, and a four position Kunkka. I don't think four position Kunkka is good. That said, this is a lot of wave clear, a lot of team fight. I think this is a very solid draft by Volsal. I really like this. Um, I think there are some better options at four position than the Kunkka. But looks like he had a pretty good game. I'm interested. He just went Lotus Orb into Aghanims. So I don't really know what the benefits are, but I guess we'll see. Snow Cones went with Mid Sniper, Carry, Arc Warden. I don't really like that duo. They both kind of do the same thing. I mean, Arc Warden a little bit better, in my opinion, that D pushing, split pushing, team fighting, literally everything. I feel like Arc Warden is just a better hero. Um, but they kind of do the same thing. They just sit in the back lines and attack, right? So I don't really like them both there. Um, they have a four position Nyx Assassin, five position Spirit Breaker, and an offlane Bloodseeker. Okay, so I don't like the five position Spirit Breaker. It feels like you don't really... I wonder why they first picked Bloodseeker. I don't think Bloodseeker is anything... Spectacular, he's 50%. You kind of confuse yourself a little bit with this draft because you have three heroes that want to run at you, take fights, find pickoffs, and then two heroes that want to sit in the back, farm all game. But you don't have a tank for team fights. If they get initiated on, they just lose a team fight. Mars blinks and ults anyone, they're dead. There's no one that can survive it. I, I think I like Volsal's draft better. I think it's just more well rounded. I, I see what they're trying to do here. They want three guys that are in the mix and then two guys in the back balances out right but if you get initiated on you're just dead you don't have great d push really i you have sniper and arc warden who can sit far back arc warden's good at defending towers with his bubble but the rest of these three heroes are kind of useless at d pushing yeah i like Volsal's draft better this game they're moving on them there's a lot here there comes the stun oh Oh no, that's so unlucky. Wow. There's the first life. There's the They kill the Arc Warden in the background. Link is up on the Mars though. He can see everyone he's gonna Oh Almost, that would have been sick. Kill the sniper though, which is huge. Yeah. This is a hasted OD. Yeah, it's tough. Oh, the double! Fair, yeah, good torrent on the Konka. I like the way you think, Tyro. Oh, that's gonna be a ravage. No, almost. Yeah, they overextend extended a little bit too much. I'm actually kind of shocked about this. DKB TP out by the OG. And TPs, and that's why he's the only one left wow. alive. And lastly, I hear this was a good game as well. We have game three of Volsal versus Snow Cones. This is the upper bracket. The winner goes to the championship. The loser falls down to the semifinals in the lower bracket and plays and Kenny next week. Uh, so let's find out. Volsal, they went with Night Stalker again. Excuse me. So they did that game one. I don't think it went too well. So I'm curious why they tried it again game three. Uh, he might just be very comfortable on it. They went with an Ursa. He's pretty fighty. Ursa, I think, has fallen out of the favor a little bit, down to 50.1% or 50.9%, almost 51%. I like it still. I think it's still decent. 
And then Chikiro, love Chikiro, great deep pusher. Less Shrek, I like Less Shrek, although apparently he sucks. I, the more you know, 46% win, or yeah, 46% win rate is not good, but I like the hero. I guess he's just not good this patch. And they went with a Kanka 4 position again, so don't really love that. He went with Heaven's Halberd this time instead of a Lotus Orb, and then Axe. So I get it, Axe is good team fight, right? All the torrents that pop up, Torrent Storm, just seems very strange to me. I don't really know what this hero accomplishes, other than like really good deep push as I was talking about in an earlier game, you can X yourself, TP back, deep push, and then come back. So you, it's really good against split push. But yeah, overall, pretty well-rounded draft. You got tower push, you got, I guess the team fight of the Kanka, I guess maybe that's why they thought it, although they picked him up first. You got deep push of the Jakiro, uh, and two brawly guys here. Not bad. They definitely want to run at you. It's essentially four melee heroes and a support that casts spells. That's kind of what I see when I see this draft, because Lush is kind of a melee hero with his spells. Snow Cones, they went with Medusa. So I was kind of wrong about Medusa. I guess Medusa's really good right now. I guess she's like pretty solid. 49% uh, win rate, but she's getting picked up a lot more. I guess Arteezy's been spamming her, for instance. And Arteezy definitely knows more about Dota than me. With Juggernaut, Snow Cones always use Juggernaut and like this two super ultra carry lineup. They usually go like Juggernaut, Faceless Void, Juggernaut, Spectre, jet, like stuff like that. And I never like it. I don't like it again this game, although now Medusa's in the mid. I still don't like it. Neither of these can create space for the other. They both need to farm, um, especially with these, these item builds. Neither of these, they both went farming builds, right? So neither of these guys want to make space. So you have to have a wicked good Brawly lineup here. And they kind of do, actually. Warlock and Axe, uh, Fatal Bonds into Spin can kill them very fast. Uh, they went with Dark Willow. You don't really have any Wave Clear here. You got the, the Snake from Medusa and Fatal Bonds. Yeah, you don't really have any Wave Clear, which is a problem because you have Tower Pushers. You have Wave clear and pushers uh you don't really have any way to hit towers because they can just kill all your creeps and then you're sitting there so i definitely like volsel's draft better again i'm not 100 percent sold on this four position kunkka uh they've been winning with it so i could be wrong um i think this is a greedy duo here i think medusa did pretty decent recently in pro level pubs but i still think i'm gonna go with volsel's draft here I gotta be better about it's not casting game. over people that are casting. I'm so used to not having casters, and now Tyrell's casting a bunch. So, good smoke gank here. Willow trading life for Medusa though, super worth it. Warlock probably to go down as well. Willow buys back immediately. And I saw her engage. Warlock goes down. Warlock goes down without bolts. Yes, he does. He teleports immediately. Excellent ultimate from the Medusa. Oh, down, oh the bash. Trouble, oh, the Warlock ult. But yeah, Medusa goes down. Ursa's doing so much damage. He's got the Bastard. There's a lot of worth there. Juggernaut's dead. Overall, extremely good series. That game was back and forth. Game three, I think. And Kenny versus Two Boots is still the game of the week. That game was extremely exciting to watch. This game, however, or, or this series, rather, is definitely the series of the week. It went to three games. Uh, both these teams are very good. Snow Cones dropped down to play And Kenny, um, which is, I think, more exciting for me because And Kenny already played Volsel. So I think it's going to be a best of three. I don't 100% know um, the, the format. I can't imagine it's a best of one and then into a five-game series. I think this week is a best of three. Volsel is going to have it off. And then championship will be next week. That's my guess. Don't quote me. I'm not 100% sure. All right, we're coming down to it. Let me just double check here before I make any predictions or anything. Looks like... Should be 218, which is Thursday. Snow Cones for San Kenny, then 225. So the championship is next week. This week it is this Thursday. Should be a best of three, I'm pretty sure. And I don't know when the championship will be. I'll probably talk about that later. But normally it's like I've seen people reschedule to a weekend because I think I think it's supposed to be best of three, but teams can mutually agree to be a best of five. I don't 100% know the rules. I'd have to double check. I think in technicality it's a best of three but if both teams agree beforehand to make the championship a best of five then it'll get switched but some people don't have time for that on a thursday night some teams move it to the weekend to have more time for a best of five i don't know i think best of fives are exciting but 
Um, so we, you know, it's an amateur league. A lot of people just don't have time for that, honestly. So I only have one game to predict. Both these teams have had a really good season. I think Snow Cones have found their mojo here in the playoffs. They've been playing extremely well. Um, and Kenny's been playing extremely well all season. Uh, they dropped down. They still won. They had a really close game with two boots. Two boots had really close with Snow Cones in the playoffs. Snow Cones had really close with Volso. Volso had really close with Ann Kenny. Honestly, this is a toss up. It literally could go either way. I'm going to give the edge to. I think I want to give the edge to. You know what? I've been disrespecting them all year. We'll give the edge to Snow Cones. They come from the upper bracket. And Kenny just did a roster change. They played really well. But we'll give the edge to Snow Cones. They've been playing extremely well. And it, it's going to be a rematch in the finals. It's either going to be Volsol versus Ann Kenny or Volsol versus Snow Cones. This is going to be a very good series. Definitely a series of the week. Game of the week. The only games and series of the week. I look forward to watching it. Um, yeah, good luck to both teams. Uh, great season to everyone who is now eliminated. I hope you all come back uh, next season. It'll be a little bit different with the rank change, but we'll see. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you're still watching, I appreciate it. Mm, I probably will, It's honestly way easier now to make content because it takes up way less time. I don't have work today, so I was able to do it later. I slept in as well. So I can do next week in probably 20 minutes and then edit it in 20 minutes and be done and the championship as well. So I'll probably end up doing it again. If not, I'll see you all next year, but I'll probably end up doing it again. Thank you guys for watching. I will uh, see you soon.